my journey started in Ghana, Africa, where when I was 10 years old, I stole a nickel on my birthday. And my mother beat me so bad that I had blood pouring out of my eye. And I felt so sorry for myself. And I cried all day. And I said, I will never steal again, number one. I said, I will never be poor again. Yes. So my journey started in Africa. And a missionary, God started working with you when you were young. A missionary from America came to my village and picked me up right and brought me to the United States to attend school. Because I said to myself, I will never steal again. I will find something. I was in college in Chilton, Wisconsin. No work to do. And the factory from Chilton came looking for students to work in a canning factory. And I volunteer to put corn and peas on the conveyor. They pay you 90 cents an hour. And they take you to the, to the small town. There's no black people there except Mexicans and me. <laughs> and we were working. The little money I got, I was happy. I had a paycheck. Yes. And, but I said, this is not my final job. I was going to school, college, and I studied, I studied, I studied, till I graduated yes. and came to Chicago, 1964. From Chicago, nothing to do. They put me, the missionary was my advisor. He put me in Southtown YMCA, right on 65th, yes. right in Inglewood, 55th and Union. That's right. I was there, in a room there. The little stuff that I bought at <laughs> record player and radio, one day I came and they stole everything from that room. Yes. So I have to start all over again. Amen. But I never gave up because I made up in my mind I that will never I will die. never steal again and I will never be poor again. Yes. Amen. So that dream keep on in subconscious. Yes. Subconscious. Yes. When I was in college, they, I knew that God has a special plan for me because I was the only one of 10 children who was blessed to be brought to America. Yes, yes. And the missionary was working with us. In college, he said, I need to show you the United States. He took us to Tugalu, Mississippi in a Volkswagen bus. And we were just, well, I'm in America. I'm leaning, I'm going to learn about America. We went to, we were going to Southern Christian College. And we were driving around, we had to get gas. So I went to a gas station and I have to use the bathroom. I went straight to the bathroom. And when I came back, the white lady saw me, hey nigga, why did you go there? I said, what do you mean? Can't you see the sign? It said, men, ladies, and colored. I didn't know I was colored. <laughs> So I went to the men's bathroom, and she didn't like that, so she called the police. Call the police. 10 o'clock in the morning, the police arrested us and took us to the police station in Tugalo, Mississippi. They kept us there from 10 o'clock in the morning till 10 at night. The phone was ringing and ringing and ringing. We didn't know there were five of us. We didn't know that they were planning something. They were planning a lynching party <laughs> for some niggas in town. So at 10 o'clock, the same police who was in Kahook <laughs> with the Ku Klux Klan, they set up a trap for us. And they were so nice, they talked to us real nice. At 10 o'clock, he led us and said, this is trouble times. I will show you how to get to the highway. Not knowing that he drove us to the ambush and let us go. As soon as he left, we were going to stop sign, a long line of cars followed behind, and when we got to a stop sign, the car jackknifed us, and they, the Ku Klux Klan people came and pulled us out of the car. They beat us real good, and they stuck us in the car with a gun in their hand. I said, we are not from here, we are foreigners, we are, we are from Africa. I said, shut up, nigga. Nigga is a nigga no matter where he comes from. 
So they took us to the forest preserve where they did a lot of lynching. That was 10 o'clock at night. It was pit dark. But I saw, when I saw that rope, then I really said, oh my God, this is serious. And the only thing I can say was God, God, yes. God, yes. God, yes. God, yes. God, yes. God. Yes. Because there was no need. I was helpless. There's nobody. My folks didn't know what was happening. I was calling on God so much. He said, shut up. It wouldn't matter because he has the gun and they have the ropes. We were going to be gone one way or the other. So I, com I continued to shout, oh God, oh God. I always believe in miracles. Because when I was in Africa, I was always praying because my mother taught me how to pray. My mother taught me Psalm 91 and Psalm 23. Every day I have to repeat that. During that time, God was listening to my prayers and I didn't know. But on this occasion when I was at wit's end, the salvation came. Because right in the midst of being taken to the rope, yes. there was a short white man. I can still recognize that man when I see him today. He was short, big, big belly, bald head, long nose, and big eyes. He came to the forest preserve and said something to those guys. There were 20 Ku Klux Klan people. Instead of completing the mission, they let us alone. And we were left in the forest preserve. They put a hole in one of the tires. Up to today, how we managed to fix the tires in, the pit black. in a pit black, I couldn't tell you. Nothing but, God. but he drove us to Memphis, to the medical center in Memphis. So before the doctors treated us, they have to report this to the, to the newspaper. So the news reporters, FBI and everything, we were on the World News, 6 o'clock news. You still have a picture of the incident. Yes. But I'm telling you, there is a God who comes to the help of helpless people. Yes. I went through medical school and graduated 1974, and in September, my doctor friend brought me to this church to meet this lady That's right. who is now who is now my wife. <laughs> it was a marriage that was preordained that I should belong here. Because I first came, I settled in Inglewood. Then I found a girl that God gave me from Inglewood and I was introduced to the church. And the Crawfords, the whole family of Crawfords accepted me like a part of the family. Yes. Yes. And when good has been done to you, you have to give something back. Yes. Yes. This is why I am a member of this church. Church of the Living God. Church of the living God. All right. And I said, I can, my contribution from Africa is to help to bring this church to a higher level yes. because God has a plan for each and every one of us. Yes. You just have to find out what your plan is. If you're not sure, keep playing to God yes. and God will make sure you in a black and white what is your mission. Because the church, when God doesn't have physical arms to come and build the church, so he uses us to build the church. Yes. God has a bank book that he uses us to use the bank. Huh. You better make it clear. So, we, when God has done something good for you, yes. don't just run away one time, you get a salvation and you go back to your old ways. All of us have something to contribute. We are one body from head to toe. Some people are eyes. Eyes cannot do things all by itself. You can just look. Some, we have tongue. The tongue can do all the talking. The tongue is the most dangerous and most powerful part of your body. This is why if you open your mouth, you see 
are a chain of teeth surrounding the tongue. <laughs> the tongue is always chained in the mouth. So the tongue can do all so much within limitations. Can do a lot of good, can do a lot of bad. You can you use your tongue and okay. cut people down, talk about them like a dog, yes. and they will, you will not see anything good they do, just mm -hmm. talk and talk and talk negative. Mm -hmm. And you put in this negative in the world, into the church, it will put a block on the church. The church will not go, grow. Mama, mama. When people come to church, and your first comment, open your mouth, and pour out negative, negative talk, you are destroying the church. Yes. The church will not grow. Amen. So we have to be positive. Look at your own blessings. Yes. God has done a lot for you. You have to be thankful for. Yes, glory. And things yes. are showing up. And, and my pastor, also my wife, God gave her a special gift. Oh, glory. In fact, God gave a lot of gifts to this church. That's right. Amen. The music. Amen. When you come to church, and you down and depressed and frustrated, unloved, when you sit down and listen to gospel music from the, the choir, yes. oh. it is so soothing. Yes, it is. It's so anointing. Yes. It's so blessing. Yes, yes. When you come here and you sit down and begin to meditate, you will begin to feel comfortable. No matter how bad you feel, how frustrated, how angry, how miserable you feel, every Sunday when church is over, you feel better yeah. when you walk around. What we have to do, we are part of the whole body. The whole body. When the toe hurts, the whole body hurts. That's right. The body will not be happy when your toe is got a gangrene That's or it. ingrown toenail yeah. and everything. You can't. You can't. When your finger yeah. is hurting, yeah. the whole body will be hurting. Yeah. But God has blessed us all yes. that every one of Go us has now. something yes. to Be give. Amen. Now, yeah. the pastor has been blessed to get involved with what we call vibrational medicine. Yeah. Huh. Because eventually, eventually, if you want to know vibrational medicine, the gospel of St. John Come on. is going to teach you a lot. It's going to combine medicine and Christianity. You all know that Christ was the only one who defeated the whole powerful Roman army, That's brought right. the Roman Empire down. Just one man. All right. Okay? Now, when you think about God, God is the most powerful. Amen. He will answer all your problems Amen. if you call on him. Things will happen in your life that will turn your whole life around. No matter how miserable, how negative they are, we have to support the church. Yes. You have to come to the Lord's side, be in the church. Be in the church where you yes. get good teaching so that your future has to be saved. And you have to make plans. Nobody can do it for you except you yourself. If you say this is what I want to do, which is positive, I have people, we have people here that will help you do it. This is why the church is a unit. This is why we are having the men's program to help encourage involvement in the church so we can help our young ones to prevent them from falling by the wayside. Yes. And this is the mission of unity. Praise God.